make sure that you pause the video and try this on your own first before listening on. To find the area of the region that is enclosed by these two curves between 0 and 2 pi, we want to follow a three-step proce procedure. In step one, we're going to set the expressions equal to one another and solve for x. So we're going to be setting the cosine of x equal to 2 minus the cosine of x. And in order to solve this, we could add cosine of x to both sides of the equation. This would give us 2 cosine of x is equal to 2. We would then divide both sides by 2. So now we have cosine of x is equal to 1. And in order to find the angles whose cosine is equal to 1, it is useful to briefly examine the unit circle. Recall the unit circle is a circle whose radius is 1. We have some key points here, but of particular note is this point right here whose coordinate is 1, 0. You may recall that on the unit circle, the cosine represents the x-coordinate. We can see right here that on the unit circle, we want the x-coordinate equal to 1. So that would be the point that I've marked right here. Now, the actual angle that corresponds to this point would be zero radians because it's at the beginning, so to speak, of the unit circle. But if we went all the way around the unit circle, we would come back right to the same point. And that angle, which is 360 degrees, would be also equivalent to two pi radians. So in other words, the solution to the cosine of an angle equaling one, while there are two that are useful to us, we would have x equals zero radians as well as x is equal to 2 pi radians. There are an infinite number of other solutions, but we only want to find the area between the curves from 0 to 2 pi. So we're going to only use those two values of x. That completes step one. Now we're going to sketch both curves between the x values that we just discovered, so between 0 and 2 pi. So we will set up a graph to show the region formed by these two curves. So we're going to go from 0 to 2 pi. So y equals cosine of x is a pr pretty familiar curve. You may recall that it begins at 0, 1. And then it kind of moves down and then back up. So actually at pi, it gets down to negative 1. So it looks something like this. That would be the graph of y equals the cosine of x. We have another curve, of course. We have y is equal to 2 minus cosine of x. This graph is probably less familiar. It may be helpful to plug a few values of x in just to get a sense of what the graph looks like. So I will plug 0 in for x. So I would have 2 minus the cosine of 0 radians. Recall from above that the cosine of 0 was 1. So this becomes y equals 2 minus 1, which gives me 1. So when x is 0, the y is 1. So that would put us right here. Let's throw pi into this equation as well to give us another point. So we would have y equals 2 minus cosine of pi. If you look at the curve we've already sketched, we can see that cosine of pi is equal to negative 1. That's this point right here. So we would have y equals 2 minus negative 1, which of course is 3. So we're going to have another point way up here at pi comma 3. Why don't we finish this off by plugging 2 pi into the curve. So we would have 2 minus cosine of 2 pi. Cosine of 2 pi is 1, so we have 2 minus 1, which gives me 1. So we would be back at this point right here, 2 pi comma 1. So this curve is going to look something like this. And it is our job to find the area between the red and the green curve. And that's going to bring us to step three of this process. We go back up and it says the area is equal to an integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x. Now, a and b are easy. Those are my lower x value and my upper x value respectively. As for f of x and g of x, I like to keep in mind that f of x is going to be my top function. And then g of x is going to be the bottom function. So it's basically top minus bottom. 
You go back to the curves down here, the top function in red was y equals two minus cosine of x, and then the bottom function was just y equals cosine of x. So when we go to set up this integral, we're going to put in our lower bound first, which was zero, our upper bound, two pi, and then again, my top function is two minus cosine of x, and then we're gonna subtract the bottom function, which is cosine of x. Now that's our setup. The rest is calculus. The rest we actually have to compute the integral. It's gonna be helpful, of course, to combine those two like terms so that we have two minus two cosine of x dx. Let's recall a couple of integration rules. If you have the integral of a constant with respect to x, then that's just going to equal the constant x. And we'll see how that works with this term in just a moment. And then the integral of a constant in front of a cosine of x is equal to the constant sine of x. So of course that will help us with this term right here. So carrying on, we're going to finally integrate and the integral of two is just two x according to the first rule over here. And then the integral of two cosine of x will be two sine of x. And then we'll evaluate this from zero to two pi. You'll recall the way to proceed from this point is to take the upper bound and plug that in for all of the x values first. So we're gonna have two times two pi minus two sine of two pi. Then we subtract the value we get by plugging in the lower bound next. So then we'll have two times zero minus two times the sine of zero. Back to the unit circle in order to help us evaluate sine of two pi as well as sine of zero. Those are the same values that we saw earlier where we had zero radians and two pi radians as our bounds. So that would be this point on the unit circle right here. Recall that the coordinate of that point is one comma zero. This time though, we're using the sine rather than the cosine and the sine is actually the y coordinate of the unit circle at a particular point. So in other words, the sine of two pi would just equal zero and the sine of zero would also equal zero. So this cleans up rather nicely. We have two times two pi, which is four pi, minus two times zero, minus two times zero over here is zero, and then two times zero. There's a lot of zeros in here. This goes out, all that goes out. So we are left with the final answer of just four pi, which again represents the area between the red and green curves.